It gives me great pleasure to talk to you about the HIV vaccine efficacy studies that are happening in, in Southern Africa. And so I'm, this is going to be a disclaimer. It's not going to be a basic science um, lecture. It's going to be about what's happening in real life in Southern and East Africa as, as we speak. Um, so I first wanted to say, I think I would like us all to give a hand of applause to all the sites in South and East Africa that have been involved in an extraordinary effort and have enrolled 9,550 out of the 9,900 men and women in three HIV vaccine studies. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and that's phenomenal, you know, that you imagine um, how phenomenal that is to enroll this kind of um, high quality IND, FDA IND studies in, in, in Africa. It's a huge a tribute to the scientists and the staff that are working at, at the sites in, 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 in South and East Africa. So these are the trailblazers, ladies and gentlemen, in this heroic endeavor. Um, this shows you the extent of the, 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 the trial sites that we have in Africa from um, north, uh, north in, Andlo, in Dola, right down to Masipumalela in, in the Eastern Cape, um, from Emma, Emma um, in Cape Town to Isipingo, Verulam, Chatsworth, Tongard, and Etiqueni in Natal. So look at those sites and you can see the kind of work um, that's been happening uh, to, to address the issue around whether we can find an HIV vaccine that's efficacious. So what are these three trials that I'm talking about um, that are currently in, underway in, 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 in Southern Africa? There's the AMP study, which I'll talk about a little bit later. The AMP study is a, is a, a neutralizing antibody infusion of VRCO1, and that's one of the studies that are happening. And there's the study called Uhambo, which is a phase 2B3 uh, study, also called HV10702, and I'll describe that much later. And there's Imbacoda, um, a phase 2B proof of concept called HV10705. And so these are the studies that I'm going to discuss today. So what we are approaching in HIV vaccine research are three different approaches uh, to see whether we can find an efficacious vaccine. Two are active vaccine approaches, um, and one is a passive immunization. The one active vac vaccination approach is called our clade C. So we are making a clade C vaccine, and we're making clade C vaccine because that's what is the, circul the majority circulating um, clade in, in South and East Africa. There's a global vaccine approach, and that's HV10705, and then our neutralizing antibody approach that we're also doing. So what is the difference between the active and passive immunization approach? Why are we approaching HIV um, prevention in this way? So in active vaccination, what we're trying to do, we're trying to stimulate the, the immune system to produce binding antibodies that have been previously been shown to be protective, either in a study in Thailand called the RV144 or in non-human primate studies in, in, in the Imbacoda study. And these, these two concepts, can we cause um, active immunization to produce binding antibodies that are not neutralizing and will bind to the to, to, to cells that are affected by HIV and destroy those cells. So that's the first question we are, we are asking in two different vaccine trials. And then we have the passive immunization approach, which means can we take preformed neutralizing antibodies, um, and in this case it's the CD4 antibody um, site to the, called VR VRCO1, and infuse these antibodies into humans and see whether we can prevent HIV infection. And this is called the HV10703 or AMP study. So why did we take these three studies and advance them into, into, into large-scale efficacy studies? So the first one I'll talk about is um, the HV10702. And this is what we call our POX protein hetero heterologous prime boost vaccine approach. And we took this into a phase three because we had evidence from a study in Thailand called the RB144 that there was modest efficacy of this regimen. So what we did is we adapted the regimen from Thailand and made it clade C specific. And this KC-specific um, vaccine met the go-no-go no go criteria to advance to phase to a phase 2B3 um, after HV10100, a trial chaired by Linda Gale Becker um, was found to be effective. And this is only being evaluated in South Africa, and it's been evaluated in men and women. 
This HV10703 or 704 study, 703 is in sub-Saharan Africa and 704 is in the Americas. This is 100% enrolled in, 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 in sub-Saharan Africa and in the Americas. And this is basically um, an infusion of the monoclonal antibody VRC01. And we're doing this because we saw in non-human primates that there was some protection. And, it's been, and as I said, it's been evaluated in two parts of the world. And then we have HV10705 or Imbicoda. And this is 94% enrolled. And this is, an, this is taking Air26 and an Air26 protein heteroglyphs prime boost, double prime, double boost, um, in, into a proof of concept in, in heterosexual women in sub-Saharan Africa. And we did this because we saw some protection in a non-human primate challenge. And so we've advanced this because um, we've met the go-no criteria and um, it's ongoing. We hope to close enrollment by the end of May so we haven't even allowed some people to come to this meeting because they have to stay at home and enroll into the, into the study. And the same with 702. So we will answer two major questions by doing these studies. We will, ask, we will answer the question whether non-neutralizing antibodies can be potent enough to achieve desirable vaccine efficacy of at least 50% for at least two years. And we've asked this by, designing, by trying to design better recombinant proteins and better adjuvants. And we're also hoping that we can induce better T helper cell response to drive higher and more durable antibody production. And the other question we're asking is, is neutralization, as we currently measure it, can it be associated with vaccine protection? And will this protection be of sufficient magnitude to overshadow all the other vaccine design approaches? So at this moment, there's a race, a race to see which vaccine will be efficacious. Will it be the pox the pox protein prime, prime boost that Helen de Gall and I are involved in, um, a, a moderately um, immunogenic um, pox virus that's, that's silent but, but may be very forceful? Would it be the AD26 potent immunogenic uh, prime um, with, a, with, a, with a wonderful boost? Will that be the one that's going to be going ahead? Or will it be a neutralizing antibody? Maybe we should, should where's the red, and black, brown, the red and green cards? Maybe we should say, who thinks the 702 is going to work? Yeah, oh, come on, guys. Who thinks the 705 is going to work? I have to say it as well, because I'm, I'm, I'm most of the protocol chair there. Who's the 705? Yeah, come on. So I think all we have is the neutralizing antibody people. Do you think the neutralizing, these big infusions of drips are going to work? Come, are you on the DSMB, so you can't put your hand up. You guys are non-believers. You're non-believers. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Are all of them going to work? Yeah. Okay. That's why we're doing these studies, because uh, you need evidence. So let's see. So this is going to be very exciting. So for the next two or three years, spectacular things are going to happen. And you're going to remember this talk that we gave. And you will remember and you'll be looking at each of the trials and hoping one of them is going to work. So let's go back to the Clade C approach and um, why we started off with HV10702. So with the Thai study, we, we had the first hint of success. And you can see in, in the top left-hand corner, there you see it, at 12 months you have 60% um, vaccine efficacy in Thailand. And then obviously what you see is the vaccine response is not durable. It, it wanes very dramatically, so about 36 months it's only 30% effective. So that was the first hint of success. And we asked our question, how do we build on that? And so what we have tried to do with HV10100, which Linda Gale is the chair, is, is try and improve on that by, by creating new proteins, new adjuvants, and by boosting the regimen at, the, at, the, at various, various time points to make sure we can increase um, the durability and the magnitude of the response. And so that's very important to try and make sure we can, we can, we can increase the durability and magnitude. Um, what we also saw with RB144, and what's beautiful uh, for us for 702, is that we'll be able to validate the correlates of protection that happened in RB144. And in RB144, the correlates of protection were, um, were IgG, and specifically IgG3, 
uh, IgG3, which were um, against the envelope, vac envelope um, vaccine matched, the GP120, and this V1, V2 loop that we hear so much about. But we also saw polyfunctionality of, this, of the CD4 T cell response, which also was associated with um, efficacy. There's lots of information about the correlates of protection, but for this purposes of this meeting, I think it's important to know that we think that the protection was um, based on a polyfunctional T, T helper cell response and on um, I, um, binding antibodies mostly to the V1, V2 and, and, and GP120. So what we did was we, we went ahead and we created this, this vaccine regimen based on the Thai study. Linda Gale um, and Fatima Leher led this phase one study. And, um, and the, the details of how we adapted the, the regimen on down here, we, we put in two envelopes from, from, from Clade C. One was the TV1 and one was a 1086. We put a new adjuvant in called M MF59 and we adapted the, the POX, um, the LVAC vector, to make it more clade C specific. And this study met the go, no, go criteria, and we were able to open up Hujambo um, to enroll 5,400 people in South Africa in 14 sites. Um, and just to say, acknowledge Linda Gale for the work that she did in HV10100, because if it wasn't for HV10100, we wouldn't be talking about HV10702. So what is HV10702 or Hujambo? This is 14 sites in South Africa, 570 Site research, trial site research staff. Imagine that, almost a half, uh, more, more than, 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 than 500 research sites, in, uh, research people in, in, in the sites. Already 5,200 people enrolled as of yesterday, and more than 100,000 PBMCs collected in these sites um, in, the, in the last, in, since we started. And this is the, the, the study schema. We prime with the um, LVAC um, vector, and we, we boost with the LVAC vector and the, and the protein at month three, month six, month 12, and we added the month 18 boost based on the data coming from the HV10100. And the chairs of the study is myself, Linda Gale, Fatima, and Mucho, um, who is from the Sachaba site in, in North of Pretoria. So what about the next study? Now this is the global vaccine approach. This is called HV10705 or Imbicoda. And Imbicoda means a rock. Um, if you strike a woman, you strike a rock, and it's about a study that's taking place in women in, in, in sub-Saharan Africa. And the approach for this vaccine is to find a potent prime, um, and using A26 as the prime, and not only just to put in a clade C um, uh, uh, inserts, but to make to put in lots of inserts um, in a mosaic fashion so that it has a global um, approach to, to priming the immune system. And you can see number two that we put the mo mosaic inserts for global coverage. And then what's different to 702 as, as compared to, to, to 705 is this, is this has a trimeric envelope protein which we add. And so basically um, it's a completely different approach. We're looking at completely different non-neutralizing antibodies to see whether we can get protection. And so basically, just to go forward, just to see what, just to go further into the design, so here is the prime, which is the adeno 26, and you can see the, the inserts that we've given, and then the boosters were using the adeno 26 with our, our clade C um, trimeric envelope. And here you can see the regimen. We, we prime at, at, at month zero and two, I mean month zero and three, and then we give a, a, prime, a, a, a heterologous boost at month six and month 12. And so this is the design of, the, of HV10705. And why did we do this study? Because we saw in non-human primates protection. There was a whole lot of regimens that we've been trying out, and in a challenge study, we found that the AD26 prime with an AD26 um, boost um, together with envelope um, gave a 94% per exposure risk reduction and full protection in 66% of the, of the macaques after the six challenges, after six challenges um, of the, um, the non-human primates. So this provide us, provided us with the evidence to move forward and, and, and evaluate this, this regimen in an in efficacy study in, in sub-Saharan Africa. As we speak, there's a new study being planned called HV10706, and this will, take, um, this will start in about August, September um, this year, and it will involve, it'll involve um, MSVM in, in the Americas to test a, a very similar regimen to see if we can find a global vaccine. This is the HV10705 study design, um, and we enrolling 2,600 women um, with a one-to-one -one randomization. 
So let's pause and reflect a little bit. Um, so what I have just told you about, we have two non-neutralizing strategies that are being undertaken. One's based on the non on, on RV144, which had correlates data, and, and the other one is based on a non-human primate challenge model. Both approaches suggest that um, binding or functional antibodies like ADCP or ADCC, where Guido is, Guido is the expert on, as well as some T-cell responses um, to, to CD4 envelope and other early spot data will, will be the correlates of protection in this, in this approach. And we will see whether these presumed correlates um, um, are shown to be consistent in our human efficacy studies. And we will also see whether the monkeys lied or not and whether, whether, whether monkeys told the truth about the one study. So we'll see whether there was any correlation between the non-human primate uh, model and, and, and the, humans, um, the human study. So this is very exciting and um, a nice approach. So let's get back to the neutralizing antibody approach. So over time, um, and before antiretrovirals were ready available, um, where there were longitudinal cohorts that followed up people who seroconverted and followed up them over time. And in a, in a few of these people, individuals, about 10 to 15 percent of these individuals, some of them after about two years would produce broadly neutralizing antibodies that were very potent and could neutralize HIV, but, but by that time the, their virus had changed so it didn't help the, the, the participant um, who, who produced them. And with technology, people were able to, to, to start to, with crystallography and, and um, with technology, we were able to start taking these neutralizing antibodies and, and clone them and make monoclonal antibodies. And one of the first, the first monoclonal antibodies to, to enter into human development was something called VRC01, which, was a, which, which binded to the CD4 binding site. And that was the first... Um, um, uh, the first antibody to, to go into clinical trial and form the basis of the AMP study, which I explained to you earlier. So what, what does VRC01 do? It blocks attachment to the CD4 binding site, and hopefully um, it can neutralize um, um, the viral clades it's, it's, it's exposed to. Um, uh, VRC um, is potent in, in vitro, and it, it neutralizes between 80 to 9 percent of all viruses of the major clades, um, and the, the study design will help us understand which dose we need um, of VRC01. Why is VRC01 interesting? Because again, it, was, it showed protection in non-human primate studies, and we'll, again, we'll see whether the, the non-human primate studies, whether the, whether the monkeys lied or they told the truth um, because we're doing the study in, in humans as well. So what is the AMP study, or HVTN 702, I mean 703? It's called antibody-mediated prevention. And the question is asked is, can we infuse this monoclonal antibody um, in, in HIV at-risk individuals and see whether um, we can protect against HIV acquisition? Uh, Larry Corey and Mark Cohen um, are the PIs, with Surilata and Naradso from Zimbabwe as the co-PI. So these are the cohorts. There's a, it's a, a three-arm study. There's a low-dose um, VRC. There's a, um, a higher dose, and this is compared to placebo. And we will see this study will help us to understand exactly how much of the VRC01 we need uh, to, uh, to um, uh, prevent infection. These are the research sites that are happening, you can see, all over Africa. I think we should give everyone a, a huge round of applause for enrolling to the study. Yeah, this is one of the most difficult studies to do. So if any of you are, is anyone from the AMP study, from the sites? There's Linda Gale, there's another one, uh, Sinead, but there we are, here with James. So this is a drip. So each participant comes and gets a drip and it's infused um, at the clinic. Now, when we, when we discussed the study, um, people said, oh no, women in Malawi, they'll never take the drip. Uh, women in Zimbabwe will never take the drip. And no one thought that the study would work um, in, in, in sub-Saharan Africa. But what we've seen, that we've completed our enrollment in record time, we have 96% retention, 30, 31,000 visits in, in sub-Saharan Africa, 98% infusions complete. It's, you know, around 15,000 infusions. I think that's remarkable. James, I think it's remarkable. Come hell high, hell high water, protest in Zimbabwe, protest in, in Cape Town, these women come for their infusions. And I think it's quite remarkable uh, that, that, that such a feat um, has occurred with this study. So this is going to be a very exciting study to, to watch. 
What's coming up, I said that the first um, study, first neutralizing antibody to hit um, human development was the VRCO1, but there are a whole lot of other neutralizing antibodies that are coming into human development. And the thought is that what we would look at eventually is a cocktail of these antibodies to prevent HIV acquisition and even for treatment. And so we in South Africa have our own uh, body neutralizing antibody called CAP256. And this neutralizes about 72% of the subtype C viruses, and it has exceptional potency, uh, which makes subcutaneous administration um, very possible. So we have gone ahead, um, we've seen that there, there's a, in non-human primates, there's protection. So we have evidence in non-human primates that this CAP256 will, will work. And we're looking at developing this CAP256 in combination with other um, and monoc monoclonal antibodies to see whether we can also have a, a cocktail that's CLAID-C um, based. So this is a good example that on African continent, we can go from the bench to the bedside, and that's the CAP256 story. We started off with a cohort. There was a woman in the cohort who produced body neutralizing antibodies that was identified, um, that was isolated, it was shown to be efficacious in, in monkeys. There's been GMP production, and a clinical trial is planned towards the end of this year. So that's a remarkable story that Africa can do it for themselves, isn't that remarkable? You know, that we can do it as well. Um, and that's a remarkable story about a, a, mono, a monoclonal antibody. So as you can see, um, I think, and I think Linda Gale also agrees with me, that it's a damn exciting time to be in the HIV vaccine business. It's an exciting time because we have three trials you know, running in Africa. Um, and it'll tell us whether um, the neutralizing or the non-neutralizing approach um, will, um, is, is good, whether we need to tweak um, these, these regimens to provide reasonable efficacy in high-risk areas of the world, particularly in clade C. And these studies that we are doing today will set the stage for the entire design and development of HIV vaccines for the next decade. How cool is that? How cool is that? And it's all happening here in, in Africa. So it's incredibly cool that we will determine the way vaccines are designed in the future. But I have to say, um, with all this, with all this um, uh, promise of success, we have to start thinking about what happens the day after success. And the day after success should begin before we have success. We need to vaccinate the placebo, set in motion a uh, correlates program. We need to do additional uh, phase three studies. We need to scale up production. We need to, we need to bridge to other, other, other populations like adolescent girls. In, and we also need to bridge into the infants to prevent breast milk transmission. And so we have to start planning all of this because we can't uh, sleep um, if we have efficacy in these studies. So I'm gonna end with this um, slogan. Um, that, that we in the HIV vaccine believe, you know, we all want to make HIV history. Let's all make HIV history. So I'm going to conclude to say I have, I have the, my talk, the, my acknowledgement slides are longer than my talk. No, I'm only joking. Um, I want to first of all um, acknowledge um, all the study staff, the community engagement teams, and most of all the participants who joined the journey to find an HIV vaccine. And I want to acknowledge um, Fatima Leher, Erica Lazarus, particularly Linda Gale Brecker, for all the work that she's done. And you can see the, 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 many, the many PIs, and most of them are, are female PIs as well, which is wonderful to see. Also, I need to acknowledge the, um, the, the HVTN um, program, Guido, who does all the ADCC, and I, have to, I write to him in the middle of the night asking him to decipher put this in clinical, clinical words so I can understand it. So thank you for always helping me and being very patient. Um, the, the EMT, the Gates Foundation, that are huge funders, um, DAIDS, that is our biggest funder, um, the pharmaceutical companies, Janssen, Sanofi Pasteur, and, um, and GSK, as well as Caprisa for lending, showing me the data on, uh, sharing the data for CAP256. Lots of funders and lots of collaborators in this endeavor. And these are the people that have been involved in the CAP256, the funders and, and collaborators. And I want to thank everybody uh, for listening to this talk and for hopefully being, in, hopefully you're more enthusiastic about HIV vaccine trials after this talk. So thank you very much.